Hey guys, it's Stacy, your favorite Lyle's lady. So I want to give you guys a story time of the most interesting, confusing, potentially dangerous appointment I've ever had with a client. Stay tuned. So if you guys don't know, I run a mobile head lice removal service and I am based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I've had my business for about nine years at this point. When this um, situation took place, this was like maybe the second or third year of my business. It was relatively early on in my business. I know that. Um, so one day, a mom called me. She had two girls and they both had lice. She was dealing with head lice on her kids for, you know, a while. And she wanted um, to hire me to get rid of it. And of course, I said yes. Um, I believe... I went to that appointment either, probably most likely the next day. I do remember that wherever she was located, they were far from me, at least an hour away. They were like in the middle of nowhere, Georgia. Um, early on in my business, I would go pretty much anywhere in Georgia. It doesn't really matter how long it took to get there, whether it was over an hour, two hours, I would still go to that do uh they didn't matter what they were located i would still go to that appointment nowadays my service area is much smaller than it was in the beginning but in the beginning i was relatively new new business so i would just take clients wherever they were but anyway so i get to the house and i do want to give you guys sort of like a a layout of the home or their house um, it, I think their house was, it was either a very small house or a trailer. I mean, it doesn't really matter either or. I just wanted to give you the sort of like the layout. It was like an open concept living situation where the living room and the kitchen was right next to each other. Um, so how I had, um, position me treating the girls is that I would face them like all my clients, they sit on a chair and that's when I you know, treat them. So I pos positioned the chair where their back was to the kitchen and they were looking at the TV because while I treat the kids, I just want them to be entertained because, you know, it, I could spend an hour or two just treating their hair, just depending upon how much of an infestation that they have. So I just, you know, prefer them, you know, amuse themselves while I do this so they don't, you know, complain and whine and, you know, because it can be a very long process. So anyway, I positioned the chair where, um, the like I said before, the back they were um, their backs was to the to the kitchen because the kitchen was like the brightest area. So their hair, their head was like, their hair was like towards the kitchen, and they could like watch the TV in the living room. The TV was right next to their front door, and at their front door it was like um, a circular uh, window on on the door. So when you look out, when you look at the door you could see who's outside even without them knocking and where I was standing I was in eye level to the door so I can just turn my head and I'll be able to see who's at the door um, at the house was mom the two girls and the grandmother the, I remember the grandmother was sitting on the couch facing the TV and and the TV like I said earlier was right next to the to the front door but anyway so I treated um, the first girl. The girls were relatively close age. I think one was eight, the other one was like 10 or something like that. So elementary school age. So anyway, treated the first girl. Um, t probably took about an hour. Nothing really happened. And then I was going on treating the second girl, the second daughter. While I was treating the second daughter, mom said, okay, well, while you're treating her, I'm gonna go get, sorry, I'm going to go get um, go get you some cash to pay you. I told her how much it would be. So she and the daughter that I just treated, they both went to, you know, get the cash. Because I think the bank was like relatively far. It wasn't close to them. So it might, it, it would have taken them a little bit just to, you know, go there and back. So at the house was me, the other daughter I was treating, and the grandmother. Maybe 10, 15 minutes passed. Um after the mom left 
and there was a knock at the door. Um, the grandmother called out, who's that? And the person, and I looked at the, the front door because I, I would be able to see who's at the front door because there was a window on the door. And the person who was knocking intentionally, I think, knocked on the side so that they're not in front of door knocking. They were knocking like on the side, like they were on the side of the door so no one would be able to see see them through the through the window on the front door. So the mother, so the grandmother called out, who's that? And then this man was, um, appeared in front of the door, in front of the window on the door. And the grandmother let out a gasp. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what what's going on? She's like, oh, that's their, their dad. I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't think anything of it. And then she said, he's on drugs. I'm like, what? <laughs> he's on drugs. But she didn't open the door for him because I, apparently I, I found out later mom and dad were going through a divorce and it wasn't a friendly divorce. I forgot to include that they did have a dog. The dog was relatively small. I think it was like a ch chihuahua or something like that. Um, I don't remember the exact breed, but I remember that you can actually, you know, the, the dog was, you know, small enough that you can hold and all that and carry easily. Um, so while I was, before mom left, the dog was, you know, in the house being a dog, you know, run, running around. And when the, when mom left to go to the bank, she actually let the dog out so the dog can, you know, relieve itself and then, you know, just play around outside. So just wanted to add that tidbit because I forgot in the beginning. So the grandmother said, no, he's on drugs. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> couple minutes pass. Their dad, I'm assuming had the dog in his hands and was holding up to the to the to the to the window and then I'm like what is he gonna do with the dog because I was so I'm like to be honest I don't think I was scared when it happened I was just confused of what was going on because I was just so confused so he you know he held up the dog to the window and then you know he was gone I, I wasn't sure if he left by then or anything but because you know no one opened the doors but yeah, so I, apparently he left with the dog. So maybe like 10, 15 minutes passed after that whole situation. Mom came back. The grandmother said what happened. And they were just talking about it. By then I was like, okay, I need to get out of here because there's just a lot of shit going on. <laughs> so eventually I was done with the second girl. And the mother, you know, paid me and I was on my way. But wait, there is more. So maybe a few days to a week later after that incident, after that appointment, the mom called me. Guess what she, guess what she said? She said she wanted me to testify, I, I guess on her behalf, because I was a witness to that whole situation against the dad. And you know what I said? I said, well, first of all, I was, I just didn't know what to say because I was just speechless. I'm like, why am I in this? So I just said, okay, sure. I don't know why I said yes, but I was just like, oh, sure, why not? But eventually, I actually never got a call back or anything like that. So I never did testify. Um, the dad, I don't think, I don't know if I include this earlier, did, did take the dog. I'm not sure. I, I'm sure the dog was fine. I mean, it's the kid's dog. So I'm, I, I don't think he would do anything to the dog, but I don't know. I don't know if this man was on drugs. I don't know. But anyway, so that was the weirdest, most interesting, potentially dangerous thing that's ever happened during an appointment. Um, it was later when I was actually out of it, that situation that I was like, that could have gone wrong really, really fast. Because when people are on drugs, and I don't know if this man was or was not, they just do crazy things. And they're very un unpredictable. So it would have been really bad if I was in a situation that would that didn't even pertain to me and something happened to me. But anyway, but yeah, so that was very strange. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that story time. I'll see you guys later. Bye.